Today we're talking about how to record a MIDI keyboard in Reaper. So if you've never actually hooked up your keyboard to Reaper, depending on what type it is, there's a few steps to follow. And then we're going to actually make a recording using that MIDI keyboard. We're going to do some quantization and some other things that you should be aware of. So we're going to have tons of fun. We're going to get started in just a second. Hey, it's Paul Toby here from jazzmental.com. Today we're talking about how to record a MIDI keyboard in Reaper. So the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that our MIDI keyboard is connected properly. And the way to do that is once you're in Reaper, just click Control P and you get Reaper preferences. And then scroll up to audio MIDI devices. And if your MIDI device is not listed here, you can see mine says Mayo, and it's actually enabled. So if your device is not listed here, then you're gonna to have to do some extra troubleshooting steps in order for it to appear. But sometimes even when it's there, it's disabled. So you have to right click on it and click Enable Input. Once you've done that, come back to the Reaper project. In this particular case, you can see that the first track is a drum track. And we made a video about this earlier on how to record a drum track in Reaper. And this is for a recording that we're doing called Pure Imagination, the song from Willy Wonka. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add an instrument track. So there's a couple of ways to do that, but I find the easiest way to add a virtual instrument, which is what we're going to use with our mini MIDI keyboard is go track, insert virtual instrument on track, and then choose the instrument that you want to use. And you can see that I have a bunch of VST plugins here. So we're going to make a bass track to go along with the drums, and we're going to use our MIDI keyboard to record that track. So we're going to choose Aria Player, because this is a jazz ballad, so we're going to get a good bass sound out of this. So let's go to Virtual Playing Orchestra, strings, scroll down to bass solo pizzicato. And we're gonna pull that into track one here in the aria player. And you'll know if you can hear it just by clicking your mouse on these notes. And if you can hear it play, which we can, we're good to go. So once we've done that, now we need to come back to this track, make sure that it's armed for recording. And then once it's armed, choose your MIDI input right here. So you can see in and input MIDI, Mayo, all channels. And then we should be able to play our MIDI keyboard, which I'm doing right now. And you could hear the sound that's being captured. So on this other page, I have pulled out the, the lead sheet that I wrote for Pure Imagination, which is in another video, how we actually went about making this lead sheet. I think the video was called how to make a lead sheet in Finale. So it's actually open here in Finale. And I'm gonna move that off my screen so you can see what's happening on the screen. And I'm gonna just follow along to the, re to the lead sheet and record a bass track. And then we'll show you how to quantize, quantize it a little bit and get a good recording. So, if you want, sometimes you need the metronome enabled. So that's this little button up here, metronome. And if you click it and click the space bar, you can hear the metronome playing along with the track. All right, so then all we need to do is hit this record button and it'll start recording our MIDI track. So let's go ahead and do that.
And once you've done recording and you like that, let's say you didn't make a ton of mistakes, which I don't think we did. Let's just click save all. And then what you can do is to double click on this recorded section and it will open the actual MIDI values displayed in note value over here. So we've got, you can see the keyboard here on the left and these are the values of each note. If you actually click on them, they'll play. And they'll also delete if you click them wrong. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all, just control A, and now we're gonna quantize it by clicking Q. And you're gonna get this quantize events box. So we didn't really play any more than quarter notes, but we're gonna quantize it only to the eighth. And by the way, the larger the number, for example, one thirty second, the less it will get close to the beat itself. So we're gonna choose an eighth. And we're also gonna use swing here just in case, and I don't believe I did this, but just in case I played any eighth notes in the bass track, it would quantize those for swing, which can be really quite helpful. And then before accepting it, you can actually play it. So that sounds pretty good. Let's assume that there's nothing really out of order here. And if there is, we can come back and fix it later. We're just gonna click OK and then Escape and that'll take us back to this track. So one of the things I did do was I did play the second A and the second A of Pure Imagination, which starts here on this F minor chord, is a little bit different than the first one. So that's why I just kept going. But sometimes what you can do is just copy entire sections. So for example, if we placed our cursor at this first note here, and let's zoom in by clicking the plus key. If we put our cursor right there and we, we have the track selected and we click S, it's actually gonna split the track at that point and you can delete any of the unused portion. And then what you can do is you can actually duplicate this just by clicking Control D and it'll actually move it. You can see that it moved it to the right automatically. But you can also click Control C and then place that at any cursor point and then click Control V and it'll place it in there as well. So that's a lot of handy stuff if you have tracks that keep duplicating sections over and over again. So now what we wanna do is just rewind to the beginning. We're gonna take the metronome off and let's play our bass and drums together. Okay, I like to keep it fairly simple in the beginning for a drum track, just in case we need to uh, fit the bass. So I like to keep the bass simple in the beginning because later on, once we add piano or whatever instrument we're recording, we can add more notes to it if we need to. So right now, let's do it one more time. This time I'm gonna add a piano track. So same as before, track, insert virtual instrument, and this time I'm gonna use my Piano Tech VST plugin. And I like the Steinway B Gentle and put a bit more dynamics on it, just like that. And you can hear that it's playing. And now what we wanna to do to that is we wanna add some reverb to the track. So let's go and add Oral River, which is reverb, Oral River, add. And then instead of the default, we're gonna choose Piano Hall. And we're gonna just take the size of the room down a bit. And now let's go back. 
and arm the track, which we have here, MIDI input, Mayo all channels. And you can hear that it's working with the keyboard. So let's see if we can't record some of this. So let's save all that. And in this particular case, I played more notes. So you can see there's a lot of notes going on there. So we're gonna cancel the quantization and let's see what that sounds like. So the interesting thing about this is I'm really just trying to show you how to record different instruments using your MIDI keyboard in Reaper. So the track that you see here for piano, I'm not going to keep that because I use a real piano in my home and I will get there in the next video that I'm creating to get to put all of this together and get a great recording out of it. So that's how to record a MIDI keyboard in Reaper. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or you run into challenges, please write your questions below. Hey there, thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. That'll really help this new channel here on YouTube. And of course, go ahead and subscribe for more videos just like this one. If you'd like more information about piano tutorials or just becoming a better musician in general, no matter what instrument, head on over to jazzmental.com and we've got lots of stuff there for you. So I hope to see you there in the near future. Thanks for your time.